Hello, um, everyone. Welcome to um, World of the Roundtable. Welcome to the new episode. Today, um, I'm leading the host. Le leading the host. <laughs> <laughs> You're eating the, the host. show today. That, 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 I'm hosting today. I'm Andrew, by the way, and um, it's my usual Strongbow Dark Fruits, but I will change it at some point. Everyone, what's your alcohol today? <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'm Jenny, and I'm drinking. Lidl's on Jack Daniels. Because why go rich when you can go for the cheap option? Hello, everybody. I am your friendly neighborhood video editor, Kelly, and I am drinking Coca Cola because Ooh. I'm sober as fuck again. <laughs> and for the purposes of this podcast, I shall be playing Matt, but formally and normally I play the fool. But today I will be drinking Aldi's own version of what I believe it thinks Heineken is called Death. Envowed because I don't know fuck what you think. Um, and actually, it's quite sweet. So, Kampai. Kampai! 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 Oh, before we start um, today's episode, um, we've got a complaint from a fan that's making him ill, apparently. Oh, what a shame. I know, it's a shame. But if you still want to continue and, and, and listen to this podcast, just buy a fucking bucket if you want to be brave. <laughs> End of. Or you could, or you could just stop listening to us because ninety nine percent of all of the feedback that we've had on this podcast has been fantastic. Well, we're all beautiful, by the way. So we are all beautiful, especially Jenny. Yeah. Oh, I'm not pissed off. <laughs> we are, we are all beautiful. If you are following us on Twitter, give a shout out and tell us how fucking beautiful we are because we deserve it. So everyone, welcome back to the round table. Yeah. Um, what's everyone, everyone been up to over the last couple of weeks since the last recording? Oh, shall I start first? Yeah. yeah. All right, okay, so I've been a busy bee. I've been sleeping. <laughs> I've been eating. And I've been doing my blog stuff, like getting my top 100 songs of 2020 finished. Going to try and get it done before January fucking ends, before 2021 ends, actually. <laughs> we'll see. It's mm -hmm. taking a bit of time. I'm just... I need a few breaks in between. That's why I've not been doing the little video edits for YouTube for this podcast, but I'll get around to that eventually. <laughs> so, yeah, I've not been busy. I've been busy-ish, but not that busy. I've been quite busy getting everything ready for me, new CD coming out. Um, it looks so fantastic in, like, CD format. I'm so excited. So that'll all be sent out on the 30th. So I've been very busy burning CDs folding cd booklets and all that shit so it's been a very very exciting life but yeah. very productive yeah, yes very and also like jenny's so talented why don't you follow that jenny at in tokyo at jenny in tokyo yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> because yes. I've, I've actually nearly sold out of the actual physical cds oh and i'm God. really i'm fucking blown away by it like congratulations i wasn't expecting it so thank you I everyone i won't mind signing I'm signing them all, so don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, honestly, because I I put in my pre-order and I'm very excited. So get it sent over because it's fantastic. Um, as for me, um, ooh, I've been going out on the tan. I've been going to restaurants. I've been um, I've been I've been living life. You 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 know. Um, I've been on I've I've been on holiday. Uh, in my fucking dreams. Um, <laughs> He's been punching <laughs> idols. I've been, I've been going to the amount of live shows that I've seen in the last two weeks are fucking phenomenal. <laughs> um, no, I've not been doing much of anything. I've, I've just sat, I've sat in the same. Well, no, actually, because I was outside last recording, so I can't even say that. Um, <laughs> I've been doing nothing. Nothing, <laughs> nothing. Listening to music, working, and. Um, Drinking and football, so which fortunately continues to go on. Um, that's it for me. Like Liverpool, also, uh, it's I know, come on one, one way or the other. Matt's staying on Twitter, so yay! <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks, for that, Andrew. Yeah, cheers. I'll say that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry, we'll be we'll be top of the league again. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> yeah. worry. Right. So, wait, did Liverpool <laughs> win or did they lose? No, we have lost consecutively for the last few times. Um, it's why I'm drinking so much now. 
<laughs> I don't, don't worry. Also, no, no, we've we've had a um, we've had a terrible run the last few times. We've um, we've missed a lot of chances, but you know we'll um, we'll we'll get back up there. Don't you worry. Sounds we'll, like you need some worry. sense punching into them. <laughs> well, you know Punching what? The players, the noidles. If, if it wasn't for the fact that I love Jurgen Klopp so much, I would walk in there and punch every single player until they won. <laughs> oh, that's what I just said. That, that'd be it. That'd be it. You, if you were to watch football, you would just see me stood at the fucking line, doing like that <laughs> the whole game. Just do you want this? Like one of them angry football mums. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. They can get really violent. You've got competition there, Matt. <laughs> yeah. So we're starting up a Wota, uh, Wota FC <laughs> fa- fantasy football league. <laughs> no, but no. We'll put a sign up sheet on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, we're on a fantasy league. Fantasy league. Yeah, we may not only been working as as I'm a key worker, of course, but um, well, as most of you know on Twitter, or that follow us on Twitter. Um, like I did a review with um, Beyond Senpai, and it's for um, Fake Gear's um, Sky Prison album, which came out um, last week. So we'll be reviewing that shortly in the podcast, in this episode. But I just thought I'd give a shout out to Beyond Senpai, who work really, really hard in this. And um, they deserve a great, big, bigger shout out than ever before. Honestly, Beyond Senpai are great. And we keep mentioning them in every part. I know we're on only the third podcast episode right now but we keep mentioning them so eventually mm. beyond senpai please sponsor us sponsor us sponsor <laughs> us guys because we will we will give you a shout out every episode we will love you. if you if yes. you agree to sponsor us i absolutely you in love. i absolutely adore tom and amanda yeah. and amanda sorry i got you banned from twitter for 24 hours <laughs> also well, to clarify that was your fault from last week's episode, when we had those questions from Beyond Senpai, it was not Tom who gave us the questions, it was Amanda. Mm. So we said it was Tom, me and Andrew felt it was Tom, but actually, let's clarify, it was actually Amanda. <laughs> Amanda, <laughs> you minx, asking <laughs> us questions like that. Also, I'm not, I've been, since the last recording and last week, I've been following Season of Ghost live stream, Ooh. which is coming in with um, Sam and Sophia. They do it every week on YouTube at 8 o'clock um, on the Saturday nights, UK time. So check out that. It's a great laugh. Not only you get to see them bicker too much and also you get to see them now and then too. So, um, At what point are we allowed to turn around and ask the listeners for shit? What, what sort of shit? <laughs> what, like fan mail or something? Yeah, because if you live in Japan, send... Fucking strong zero. <laughs> Send strong zero. It's the only reason I have fucking Twitter. Right. All goes to the Derek, Derek, send it. Disclaimer, I didn't mean that. It was a joke. But if you want to send it, message me. I feel like this is actually going to become a weekly thing for Matt as well now to just ask for strong zero. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Yeah, fuck it. Send me strong zero. <laughs> it'll it'll come down it'll come down to the thing where I'll just be like, hey guys, it's Matt again. Uh, send me strong zero. <laughs> Actually, I um I have looked online and I can order it to a degree on eBay, but it's going to cost twenty three pounds a can, and it's coming from Australia. Wow. And I'm tempted to do it purely to have one on the shelf. So. Uh. He's steep. <laughs> so if you're listening to this and you can send it to me, yeah. I know it costs about 90p a can. So I'll just give you that money and you send me a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I do actually have family in Australia, so I can always see if they can uh... <laughs> give us the goods. <laughs> I'll be your dealer for strong as a zero. <laughs> I might need one. I might need one. My normal dealer doesn't sell them. It's a question that I know, like we always do this every time. Like, what we've been listening to lately, so like, over the last couple of weeks, like that we can review on, sort of thing. I've mostly just I... been listening to the stuff that I've been trying to rank, and I'm getting to a point of being pissed off with all of it. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, aside from that, though, I'm I'm just listening to like a group called um, I don't know how 
to save the 26. I've already forgotten. Niku Roku. Niku Roku Gino Masquerade, otherwise known as Niji Mas. I've been listening to their latest single. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's N- so Niki. fun. They are a fantastic group in general. I love them. And I've just been like absolutely enamored by their single. I'm trying to find its name. Uh, Futari Dake no Hajimeta Wamoto. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'll be linking that anyway um, into the YouTubes because I, I enjoy it. I just think it's great. It, it's like a fairy tale type mm. song, but that's Niji Mas's yeah. kind of sound anyway. Mm. They're, they're quite like storybookish in how they sound. It's very ethereal and lovely. And that's basically what I've been binging when I'm not blogging and starting to hate myself. So. Don't hate yourself. <laughs> We should all love ourselves because we're fucking great. <laughs> I'm just hating myself for putting myself through 100 fucking songs that I liked. Right. <laughs> that is Sounds so like. Do your best. It's Sounds a lot. Like. But I listened to well over 600 songs last year because what else was I going to fucking do? I won't get a go <laughs> yeah. to Skeggy. Sounds like your fucking problem. It is my fucking problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't deny that. But yeah, that's what I've been listening to. Uh, Niji Mass. I just love all their music. So yeah. check them out. Yeah. Yeah. And I miss Skeggy. I fucking miss Skeggy. I miss Skegness. Oh, he wants his vodka slush. No, I don't. I certainly don't. I want, um, yeah, vodka slush. He wants Fantasy Island. I miss <laughs> Fantasy Island. Have you guys ever been to Skegness? Yes. Yeah. Oh my god, Chinese thing. We all we all need to meet up at Skegness. <laughs> Skeg yes. Vegas. Vegas. Skeg Vegas. Go for a yeah. bender at Butlins. Yeah. Wow. Well, <laughs> oh wait. Does it's any... a waste of money. That's a waste of money. It is that actually. Is Matt, yeah. Matt, this is a question for you. Do you remember Panda's Palace? Of course I remember Panda's Palace. <laughs> I might have of that, as it's especially named Panda. <laughs> mm-hmm. We'll have a great time. We'll have to put that the, um, that'll be it. It'll be when the world, when Boris says we're allowed to see each other again. We could all do a Watch of the Round Table live episode where we set one yeah. camera up and we're all sat around an actual table in a bar oh. and recorded. Oh, yes. That'd be so good. Absolutely <laughs> <laughs> What has anyone else been listening to lately? Um, apart from Passcode's album, I'm actually I've actually been listening to a lot of um Tomomi Itano's solo music. Um, she graduated from AKB back in I think it was 2013. I like solo singles since then, so I've been listening to her very old ones like DJ, um, and then some of her more newer stuff like Little Hide and Seek. Mm. There's quite a different bits of variety. She's not the best singer, so take that as you will. But she's she's quite a quite a funky f- quite funky music. So that's been a bit of a venture down down the past. Because she was my favourite AKB member, and then when she graduated, I kind of stopped following AKB48. So yeah, mm. <laughs> I have obviously listened to Strive by Passcode, which I know we're going to discuss. I have listened now to Reincarnation. I think it was called Reincarnation. Uh, The EP by Go to the Beds, Mm -hmm. which I really enjoyed. The track Akachan is an absolute mood. I fucking love that song. For me, that's the that's the um, the best standalone track on the album. But Mamajor by Mamashiba no Tigran. It's been absolutely fantastic. Completely blown it out of the water for me. I'd say so far it's it's my album of the year, but it's only it's not even like three weeks into January. But no, fantastic album, Mamajor by Mamashiba no Tigran. I would recommend that to everybody to at least yeah. give it a go because obviously it's a whack release. But I don't know. Like, so you, do you know? Like sometimes when you listen to an album, you think you've set out with something to prove. Mm. Yeah, and there's a level of quality there that you're probably not getting in a lot of the other whack groups because they're already established. Um, so it's nice to kind of see that level of quality, mm. and I'm certainly mm-hmm. not seeing it in some other corners at the moment. So I that's been a great thing. 
Aside from that, I have been listening, I've been going back and re-listening to, uh, maybe it's an age thing, but I've been going back and listening to some groups that I used to back in the day. Um, no new releases as such, but things like Itada Hikaru, Ikimono, Gakuri, and that's, that's about it. But I would definitely um, definitely recommend yeah. um, Mamashiba no Taigun and uh, Go to the Bed new releases, definitely. Yeah, I oh, know we will be discussing it anyway, and Matt's and also um, Jenny's mentioned it, and we'll be discussing Past Co's Drive, which is yes. yes, believe me, it's a great record. I know it came out last year, but it's... not that far last year. Right? <laughs> no, 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 no. It came out it's only like, like three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, three week, yeah, a few weeks before Christmas, but and also um, also mentioned um, Fate Year um, with their um, album called um, The Sky Present. It's a, it's a great concept album. And um, it's got like so much power into it. it also, has so many great talented people in it. You've got Jill from the violinist for I don't know, she's appeared in it. It's got um, Nana from Theo Nova, and also um, Rami, who she used to be in Aldius. There's another vocalist, but I can't remember pronounce her name right, so sorry, but I, I've got the idea anyway. And mm. it's great, like, it's a great concept. There's one song called Draw Your Dagger, and it just it just felt like as if it like they did a headless goddess type of song. That's what it felt like. And a headless goddess. Yeah, yeah. That's the name of their EP that they released two years ago. Two oh, years ago, headless right, goddess. Okay. Similarities. Yeah, yeah oh, awesome. the, the similarities of the sound just remind me of headless goddess, the song. And um, I know it's early in the year. It's quite a good strong record for album of the year. But I know you got few coming out later this year and also um we've got um the new decan idol coming up next year there's some old re- recorded songs being re-recorded that's awesome yeah, yeah i saw the track as well and that mm-hmm. comes out next month on the 24th and I'm I'm out, um heaven stamp new single which is out now apparently for the upcoming album yep i need to listen to that so mm-hmm. that's my bits let's talk about passcode shall we let's do it <laughs> yeah okay. let's yeah, main cast have- now I have listened to that one, so it yeah. So I listened to it yesterday, <laughs> um, and I've made notes as well. So yay! <laughs> you you will have you will have a much clearer view of it than than me. I last listened to it a few maybe a week ago. Okay. So, but but I think I'm I'm pretty ready. I'm pretty ready. Ready. I've already forgot yeah. what it sounds like. So. <laughs> uh, so who? Who amongst us would consider themselves the biggest passcode fan? Jenny, because it because it wouldn't. Be oh. <laughs> I, I I quite enjoy them. I've been really into them since sometime last year. I, Start of last I, year. I love passcode, really do, absolutely mm. adore them. Um, but I wouldn't know the ins and outs and stuff. So mm. um, so that's why I like I don't know all the members' names. No. So, so that that kind of thing. Like, I do love them, but I just don't know every, you know, everything about it. So, yeah, yeah, Because yeah, since um, like, I, like when I listened to the album, I actually went through a passcode binge for like one couple of days. Like, listening to that very old stuff on YouTube all the way to current. It's just a massive jaw. I was just seeing how much they've evolved. So, before we get into discussing, um, because there might be some listeners of this who actually don't know who Passcode are, um, what tracks got you into Passcode? Or what what were the tracks that made you take notice of them? For me, for me, it was when Taking You Out came out. And I remember just thinking to myself, how can such a small girl make that amount of noise? And I think that's why why I became so in love with Hanako as well, because it was kind of like, where does that come from? Because, as you might have noticed, guys, I love aggression. So (laughs) so it's kind of like, like, yes. You know what I mean? Mm. It was taking you out by Pasco for me. Yuna's vocals just resonated beautifully. Yeah. I'd say for me, I got into them about a year ago now. Um, I was just listening to like a lot of different Japanese artists just on YouTube recommended because I was looking at songs that I might have wanted to perform for like shows that year and then I found the song Miss Unlimited and I really enjoyed like the introduction of the song and then suddenly it just went into like the scream and the different like elements of EDM and rock and I really really enjoyed it and I just went through like the deep dark hole 
of passcode and then that's where it leads to today so with me on a, um it was um when jpo when they actually signed them for their ex libris passcode and at the time when they announced that they'd signed to the label at the same time a new single ray had come out and it was in, going to be included in that album back in 2018 and um after i heard you know, i thought what just i can't believe she's like bringing that much power out of her vocals mm. I was like, what? And uh, it just got me into the show and I, bought, and I pre-ordered the album Ex Libris Passcode, which is their best of uh, singles for the career. So that's what, that's what got me into Passcode. So. Your turn, Kelly. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I got into Passcode. Nothing. I, I, even, I've listened to this album obviously once and I'm still not interested at this point. I When I first heard of them, I think it was when I was at Hyper Japan and their music was playing. At the time, I said, I don't really like the sound of music. Like, it's just not my style. But yeah. it's a great film. Julie Andrews is fantastic in it. <laughs> what? Oh, no, wait. No, wait. No, wait. Sorry. What? You said the sound of their music, not a sound of music. <laughs> I mean, I learned about them at Hyper Japan and it's just like, I wasn't interested in their music. Wow. And I'm still not... I mean, going through the album, yeah, my interest definitely is not there. But I am not the biggest fan of EDM. I don't mind some EDM. Some I can really get into. Most I can't. I'm just not a big fan of it. I just find it to be noisy and it's very... I just don't like it. And, I mean, it's surprising because I really like stuff like Happy Hardcore and whatnot. So I thought I would like EDM, but I don't. <laughs> There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. That would be, yeah. um, I, think, yeah, exactly. I think I'm hit and miss when it comes to passcode, and I think I'm probably gonna, I'll probably carry that view into Strive. Um, I think mm. some songs really resonate with me, but I am purely there almost for Yuna's vocals because vocals. that's what I aim for. I aim for that vocal strength, whereas sometimes, unless it's tracks like Tonight or She's approaching brand new era, or nice track, or like Spark Ignition, where I actually love the verses and I love the chorus and I love everything building up to those vocals. Nine mm. times out of ten, I am at a passcode track for Yuna's vocals, mm. and the dirtier, yeah. heavier, the more the more I get of that, the more likely I am to return for it because that is that is what I search for in mm. passcode. So. I can kind of understand both both areas of it. I, I would consider myself a fan of Pasco, but realistically, I'm a fan of Yuna. I'm there for those vocals, but if the rest of the song interests me, then I'm a fan of that track, if that makes sense, you know? And yeah. See, I think the vocals in the album were fine. It was when they were really heavily auto-tuned and edited that I really yeah. did them and i'm i mean i do think that the reason i don't like edm at all is because of morning must me because when they introduced it into their style of music with one two three they absolutely fucking butchered it they didn't know what they were fucking doing it would dog and, shit <laughs> and to be honest i do think that's put me off of edm a lot because yeah. i mean i don't mind perfume i think the perfume is great and they are mostly electronic based for music and i don't care about vocal i diver which is also very electronic and heavy and auto-tuned so mm -hmm. it's it's just a style of music that i don't really gravitate towards but i do think that morning must be is the entire fucking reason for that because i hated one two three and i still hate one two three <laughs> <laughs> it was a shit track that was a shit track <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of people who disagree with it <laughs> fuck, fuck them <laughs> No, <laughs> this, this is our podcast we say what we want but no there were some songs on strive which were nice i mean jenny was just like oh there's two you're gonna like i think and yeah you really hit the fucking nail on the head it was, it was atlas and yours that i thought you'd really oh, like yeah and i was atlas, listening like, to it mm -hmm. atlas my head just like i was like switched on straight away when Atlas. yeah came. yeah and that's definitely one of my favorite tracks I remember when I first heard of Atlas, I thought it was a little okay, but it just later grew on me. Cause sometimes you have like songs that will actually just grow on you, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just literally just grew on me a little bit later. And then my favorite, I know it, it's on, it's actually on the album, but it was on their B side of Atlas, and that was um, Golden Fire or Axe on Autumn. 
That's Golden a really Fire. good track. Yeah. Golden yeah. Fire. Yeah. What did mm -hmm. I, I mean? When I heard Golden Fire, I was like, it's a little bit more power, power, like a little bit more dance clubby type sort of yeah. song. And I, I like that because I like power, power music. So, or like music that I could play on Dance Dance Revolution, essentially, like what I think would be good for Dance Dance Revolution, and that's mm -hmm. what Golden Fire is, in a way. But I, I do think that why I like Atlas is because it's not as EDM or heavy. Yeah. It's dead, and yeah. I think that's why Jenny knows I would have liked it, because it is yeah. a little bit more on the more pop side, in a way, mm. I think. Um, but they had nice placements in the album as well, because a lot of their music, I yeah. think, can sound the same mm -hmm. um if you're listening to like the full album without really paying attention so when i was listening to it the first time i just listened to it casually and i definitely remember atlas and yours being two tracks that kind of broke the smooth lining and kind of got me to pay attention to the album again um yeah. but yeah i really really enjoyed them but as i said there are a couple of tracks that i do enjoy but i think sometimes the way that the vocoder was used in the vocals was a bit too much and i think it hid their like more natural sounding voices sometimes um so for me i listened to strive and i would say firstly i listened to the album and I didn't, I didn't feel like I needed to skip any tracks. The album worked quite nicely. I just left it on and did what I was doing and they didn't think much about it. There was nothing that I didn't like, but there was only a few standouts for me that made me want to kind of pick the phone up and go, right, that's the name of this track. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So the standalones for me, and there's only one of these tracks that I don't know the name of. So Spark Ignition yeah. was... Mm -hmm. I love that track. The, that's been definitely a grower because when I first heard it, I thought, that's really good. I really like it. But I've actually yeah. grown to love it now. So Spark Ignition, I really love. The second track, I can't remember if it was called Memory or something like that. The second track, really That enjoyed. was Majestic, that one. Majestic, thank you. So I've got me track. notes from when I did me album <laughs> review. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. So Majestic, really liked that. So those two first tracks great she's approaching brand new era i absolutely love from the starry sky ep that was my favorite track on that ep so i was definitely all in for that golden fire really yeah. like that um the track that really really stood out for me and i was quite Im incredibly impressed by mainly unfortunately because of una's vocals <laughs> was the final track which was Re remnants of our youth mm. I really like that track. It's kind of like it's a night. I found it a nice way to end the album. It was kind of chill, a little bit vibey, but it kind of had like that little gut punch in with Yuna's vocals at the end, where you really weren't expecting it because it's almost quite quite a melancholic track. Obviously, given the the title, um, so it's quite melancholic. You you've got like some really nice kind of like I don't want to say harmonies, but it's a nice kind of chill track. Mm -hmm. And then you've just got like this little gut punch from Yuna, which really, really impressed me. And I just find myself, I tend to find that a track that I'm going to like is when I start pressing that. Is it the 15 second repeat back? The, like the instant replay? Yeah. 15 seconds before. Yeah, like I tend to, before. <laughs> yeah. I tend to find that they're the tracks that I know I'm going to grow to like is when I keep pressing it back and back and back. Mm. so yeah they were the they were the track that stood out to me the rest of the album there wasn't anything i didn't like but it was just kind of like it was fine for me you know mm. so but those were the tracks that really made an impact so oh, yeah. and for that and for that i tend to feel like i suppose the question needs to be is how many tracks do you like to warrant buying an album because for me i mean those four tracks i would probably buy the album because I know that it would be that case. So totally dependent on how you guys feel. See, I've got my top three. The top three for me definitely were Atlas, Stealth, Haze and Yours. Mm. And for their own reasons. Um, and there were obviously a lot of the songs like Golden Fire, Majestic and Spark Ignition. They were like really big standouts as well. Um, so I think... 
I'd say about 60% of the album were songs I knew I'd definitely listen to again. Um, I think the only song that was a bit of a stick out in a weird way was um, Seas Approaching Brand New Era. Um, I think it's that one. There was a song that I listened to and it reminded me of Fairies for some reason. The um, idol group that disbanded a few years ago. Um, Just just the vocal mix of the song was it was made me feel weird it was like passcode recovering a fairy song um i can't find the title for it on my notes but but yeah i think yeah things approaching brand new era it was that one um i don't know it was a bit more i think it was just the way that the vocals were stylized in the song um if you listen to fairies you'll probably recognize that and then also another one as well that i really really liked was um shedding tears as well they had a few phases of like house and trance music in there that are like very reminiscent of back when I was a kid because my family really loved listening to that kind of music. So it was, I think Passcode have definitely delved into like different genres of music in this album, like experimented with different things. So that's why when I recommended Atlas and yours to Kelly, I knew that there'd be something in there for her, even mm-hmm. if you haven't really listened to Passcode before. Shedding Tears, the ending, I I really noticed that ending, but I didn't notice the rest of it because, like, for those first few tracks, I was literally just thinking this sounds like absolute noise. I can't make mm-hmm. tales of it. I hate this. <laughs> like, it, it was not resonating with me. And then the end of Shedding Tears caught my attention. And then Atlas and yours as well, actually. So, yeah, she hit the nail on the head Ooh. with those two. Yeah. Caught my attention. But anything new and yours were ones that I really liked. I liked the opening of Remnants of My Youth and then the chorus kicked in and then it disappointed me. (laughs) So it's half and half for Remnants of My Youth because I was like, Mm -hmm. oh, I like you. Oh, no, I hate Mm -hmm. you. But I like you. I don't know what you've done. I'm not... I'm not going to try to... I'm not going to try to repeat or try to perform the thing of it, but I think what I, I enjoyed about that with, when it, like I say, when it came to you and the thing, it was like, it was like, ah, no, and it's like there was there was a bit where it was like it was like a piece of um, piece of the performance had been like cut into three mm. very quick edits. It was like, da, 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 yeah. da, you know, but I know what you mean about the chorus. Kat. No, I I think I think you explained it well though. It's like a gut punch with remnants of my youth. It's like it starts off very chilled out, and then there's that gut punch of Una and just how it goes. And it is like a gut punch because it was a really surprising swerve for me when I was listening to it. I was just like, oh. <laughs> I was. It was good at the start, and then the verses were beautiful, and then the chorus and the bridge I just did not care for, but. So I wouldn't listen to the song again for that reason because I know what the chorus and the bridge are like. They're not my sort of music. Mm, But but anything new, I absolutely like that one, as I did with yours. And again, Golden Fire was also a really nice one, as was Atlas. But Atlas was one that, like, when when it started, I was just like, yes, hello. (laughs) <laughs> yeah um i'll say my standout besides sparking Ig- ignition was um was yin yang i know there's one song that went totally in a different direction I did it with um the clarity and with um i can't remember the actual name of the track I need to listen to it again it's in in the album in this album but clarity yeah in clarity you had horoscope which is sort of a ballad type yeah yeah, yeah there was something similar in in this album but i can't remember the actual song title Oh, um, I think it might yes, have been anything was. new. Yeah. Anything new, maybe, Andrew? I, I can't remember. I need to listen to it again, but I know it's one song that was very, uh, very calm and melodic. That close to ballad, but I can't remember. <laughs> I like. <laughs> I suppose it is. But that's the, I mean, we've, we've said it before, but that's one of the great things about this podcast is that we all have very different tastes. Like, yeah. um, what, what do you think it is? that brings obviously Kelly I know that we know that you're not a passcode fan but for me Andrew and Jenny like what is it that brings you to passcode it for me it's um not only the power of Yuna but also the um EDM like 
8-bit sounds to it, which I'll call it a sixth element or fifth element, whatever you like to call it, because I'm um, like you always have the guitars, the drums, the bass, vocals, and you have sometimes you have like, like a synth sort of thing, which can mean anything. Pretty much like if you was listening to like a power metal band or a symphonic, you have like something different, like that sort of thing. Like with Unlock Morpheus, you have a violinist called Jill, so that sort of thing, something different. It makes it more atmospheric, sort of thing. Yeah, I'd say for me, um, even before I did discover Passcode, um, there was a phase where there's a visual K band that I really, really love called The Gazette. Yeah. And they have an album called Toxic where they did experiment with a lot more electronic EDM sounds. Mm-hmm. And a lot of fans were like polarizing with it. Some people hated it because it was a brand new sound for them, whereas others liked it because they were like evolving. So I really, really love that album. And I like it when rock artists experiment with different genres and mash them together. So I think when I listened to Passcode, it was it was like Andrew said, the 8-bit, the synthetic electronic genres, like mashed in with like really good rock music. And I think it helps Passcode kind of play around with different things in their songs. Sometimes they can play about too much with their songs. So it feels like a copy and paste of different things just mashed together. And it can be a bit overwhelming, so I can kind of understand where Kelly's coming from with um, liking a song, then not liking it, then liking it, then not liking it. Um, but yeah, I'm a big, massive fan of different mashing of genres. And again, the girls are absolutely talented. And I'm excited to see how they can keep developing their sounds as well. For me, it is purely the... Um, I mean, I do love... I love a lot of it when it all works together. I like the different elements of sound all come together to bring something like you have... Yuna's vocals, you have the synth, you have the kind of like, I don't, is it like a Nintendo? There, there is a t- there yeah. is a term, I think I know what you mean, I'd like the 8-bit kind of like Nintendo mm-hmm. yeah. thing to it. But what will realistically will always bring me will be Yuna's vocals. My go-to music taste is punk as fuck. So yeah. whatever, whatever <laughs> has a good gut punch or whatever's like, I could fuck it, yeah. Fucking, you know what I mean? Like, like, yes, that is that is what I want. So, mm. yeah. So, for as long as Passcode does that, I will definitely be all in. And I don't, and I don't actually think that there's been that much in Strive that hasn't interested me. It's just that those tracks kind of stood out. Mm. Probably the, I'd say probably the same amount as Clarity, and I enjoy Clarity. But you probably have the same amount of tracks that interest me on that. Yeah, Clarity was my favourite album of 2019 for Japan releases. Hands See, down. 20, 2019 seems so long ago, I wouldn't <laughs> even be able to tell you what came out. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> I, thought I, out. I thought I put that out there. <laughs> thank, thank God we weren't doing this podcast for them. Because fuck <laughs> me. Oh, no. See, with, with Strive, it's like there's... I like about four songs on it, which is what you've said, like, if there's four songs on it that you really like, you would buy that. But I would not. For me because four isn't enough i need to kind of like all of the album almost or just hate one or two songs or dislike one or two songs yeah what i'm gonna give the album is that they did sort out the songs really well like they've ordered them really nicely like i mean it starts off very heavy like with the passcode sound that you guys all know that lots of people enjoy and love because that's what people are there for with Passcode. They're there for the heavy sound. And it starts off like that, but then it gets a bit chiller. But then the end song, the last song, which, though I don't like it because it it's a half and half where I like part of it and then it just goes into the sound that I don't care for. It's a nice combination of the two things that that album is about, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. you've got the chill side of that song and then the chorus and the bridge go into a heavier sound which again i do think is a really nice mashup of both sides of it and it's ending you as it was basically how it ran through the album itself which i like i like it when an album is pretty cohesive in that sense most albums round it off with a ballad or a very chill song to be honest they brought the best of both worlds for passcode it might not be my favorite thing but i'm going to commend them for having a well-ordered album with a cohesive kind of like sound yeah, yeah. Definitely. and there's a good amount of songs on it as well and i don't know how many of them are past releases i mean i know starry sky is a past release 
I think that's my that's my only kind of problem really with the Japanese music industry is if you were to if you had bought the Starry Sky EP and you were now going out and buying Strive, I yeah. know that Japan is a very single driven market, and I get the difference between single EP album, but you can't continue like. I wish they wouldn't continually re-release EPs into albums. And if they did, I they, wish that by the time yeah. that the EP comes out, that they would be like, these tracks will be featured on the album, these mm. won't. Mm. Or at very least, if you have previously purchased an EP, I wish they would turn around and be like, now you can just pay a bit extra for the album. And I know that things yeah. like iTunes give you the option of buying individual oh. tracks. But there are some people that, won't as daft as it sounds especially some things they're like oh buy this entire album because it's the album version not the ep version Mm. the thing is i did not like albums for a very long time and it's because it was around time when i was like really big into hello project i just found that hello project would release albums with one or two new songs on it and then the rest of it would just be the singles especially now and that pissed me off Ohara Sakurako, who I absolutely love as a soloist, she's released mostly singles, but her albums do not are not just fucking clogged with singles. There are brand new fucking songs on there, which I'm so fucking delighted by. It's like, mm. thank you for actually like giving me a good album where I've got a lot of new stuff. The times where I think an album is okay to have all those things on is when somebody is wanting to be introduced to something and they yeah. don't know where to start. An album is probably the best place to go in it. It gives you some of the singles on there, but also a few new songs, so you get an idea of their music and their sound. With this, I how because a saw trip from last week, really, look, last week, last year. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I'm not even drinking. <laughs> um, <laughs> how because a saw trip from February 2020. I absolutely loved it and it was well mostly singles and b-sides and then some new songs but I didn't mind that because I was being introduced to her music and it gave me an idea of what she could do and but if you're somebody who's already collected all the singles why do you want an album that is a majority of those fucking singles it pisses me off (laughs) and this is why I didn't like albums for a long time I get the like the necessity of them in a way but yeah it is an issue in Japan where they just seem to yeah yeah singles on it and then it's just a quick way of making money. Her cargo princess are once yeah. again one of the worst for this, in my opinion, and so a Hello Project. Mm-hmm. And it pisses me off. If you, if you want him to release an album of singles, just call it Single Collection. I don't blame them for doing it because ultimately they want to make fucking money, and I get it. You know what I mean? I, I understand why they do it. It's very tailored to a Japanese market, and obviously. Anybody listening to this who lives in the, well, in the US or in the UK or anywhere in the world where it takes considerable effort to import music, especially if you want it physical, like yeah. it can be so quite disappointing because you think to, you might think to yourself, I might have loved the Starry Sky EP and I might have been there thinking, not knowing they were going to release another album, thinking, mm. shit, I want this yeah. physical. I, I need this. So let's say I purchased that. I didn't, but let's say I purchased that. From CD Japan or wherever we get our music. And I'd paid over the odds already to get that into the country and paid all the imports and all this, that and the other. It was now sat on my shelf only to find out that actually Spark Ignition is a fucking great track and I absolutely adore this album. But three or four tracks on it, I already have. Mm, on that EP yeah. sat on my shelf. So now I need to pay additional to do and I suppose any for any collector that'd be great, but for just any casual fan that is just thinking, you know, look how I, I want this and this, that and the other. It, and Passcode have done it time and time again where they did it with clarity. I mean, two of the greatest two A sides on one release was taking you out and tonight. Yeah. Like on one disc. That was absolutely a fantastic release. Plus Ray. You, if, Ray. Yeah, plus Ray. So it's, but you, you buy yeah, that. Really but then Clarity's got some great tracks. And I think I think sometimes it's great because it's a money-making thing and that's what it's all about. And realistically, yeah. it's never going to change. Like, nothing will ever change. But I do just wish in a way that they'd, they'd find ways to be like, look, or we at least need to know or have some idea that EPs that come out could potentially mm. make it onto albums. Especially when it comes to passcode, maybe bide your time. Wait for the album. Yeah. If when an album comes out, 
that EP or those tracks that you love so much are not on the album, then buy the EP. Yeah. Do not rush. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, for me, I, I always think of EPs as like, here's a little taste of what we're working on. I kind of feel like EPs are more of like a teaser trailer for an album. Mm. But for me, when I listen to an album, I'd rather there'd only be like maybe two singles already released from the album because a lot of artists that I listen to, when I buy their album, I'm thinking this is a brand new body of work that's Mm. carrying their sound for a year or two until they release their next album. And I really like listening to it where like nearly all of the songs I haven't heard before. I do think of like his album is kind of like a, like a story if that makes sense so if i'm just listening yep. to an album where it's just filled with singles there's nothing new or exciting to look forward to like kelly said morning musume a lot of their albums are like 95 percent singles that have already been released and as fans like a lot of fans have already purchased the singles so why would they want to bother buying the album as well yeah. you know I think that's a big downside for Japan as well because their market is very heavily saturated with physical um, sales. Mm. So I feel like if they put more of marketing towards albums, I think that'd be really, really good for them because, like idol groups like Morning Musume, like they could release a single and they could sell about a hundred thousand copies. They could release an album and only get twenty thousand at a push. You know, so it's it's a shame that albums can't be full of brand new music rather than just recycled music i think it's more like i think albums are definitely more a gimmick in japan what i do have to remind myself like with japanese albums especially is that what you're getting with an album it people aren't necessarily buying it for the music they're buying it for the benefits that come with it the checky the handshake events all the little things yeah. that they want to get with it it's like her cargo princess's new album that's come out for their 10th anniversary there's no original music in it at all there's five re-recorded songs and then others they've just thrown in there that are other songs that they've either recently released or oh um from 2014 versions which pisses me off <laughs> i think um, really bad at doing that i think they've recycled like two or three songs about fifty thousand times haven't they oh, now juliet giving us <laughs> oh yeah that's the one uh, how many think... got? i love more than five it's got more than five versions it's got 2013 it's got the 2014 version it's got 2015 version i think it's got the 2018 version as well and then Jack and Jack can do the similar sort of thing with their most recent albums i know they're disbanding that um yeah. who's have done a similar thing but Jack 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 yes yeah, single related but i mean they've done like songs like they got 2017 2016 and stuff. And, like, like what you said you just segued into a decision that about first Japanese cities we ever bought or first idol we interacted with. Mm-hmm. That's a great way to segue. <laughs> Shall we segue into that then quickly before Never we keep going that. on to rants about how these fucking albums <laughs> 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 just <laughs> fucking <laughs> Japanese music. In the main topic of today, as as we were talking about like saying like checkies and all that, saying like first Japanese CD we ever bought, a first idol we interacted and also the topic of May Cafes is another one. Yeah, because you you like May Cafes especially. I mean, I've done some as well, so... We both love May Cafes. Oh, yeah, obviously. I've never been to one. (gasps) I thought you'd be the first to go to one, you know. Punching ground for... (laughs) No, um, never been to one. Somebody's going to have to take me. Okay. Okay. Right, come on, Matt, we'll go. (laughs) Hi, (laughs) Japan. Let's do it. So, my first interaction was with Hello Project Idols. So when I went to see Kyoto in 2017 in France, that was my first ever idol live. And I was lucky enough to be able to get the VIP. Their live was a day before the special VIP fan event. And we got to see them do like a mini live and talk and such. And then afterwards we got to do a handshake event with them or a high high touch event, actually. That was my first time doing it. And I, I rehearsed a bunch of Japanese for it. And my sister wanted me to tell Nakajima Saki that she loved her, so I did. And it was really, like, it was really overwhelming. I cried. I was in fucking tears by the end of it. <laughs> um, my mascara was running. <laughs> and I was just, in, it was really nice. And it was just really fun. But my first checkie was in 2018. I had just 
flown to Manchester from France after seeing Anjouma in France to go see Necronom Idol. But my first checky was with Saki of Double End. Oh, mm. yeah, so I, I was awkward as all fuck. I was oh. like, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what pose to do. We did like like a little heart thing together. She did one half. I did the other. Mm-hmm. And I was just... Ah. I was just nervous. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. but it was nice. Saki was lovely. Didn't know any English at that point. She didn't, poor girl. But we talked about something, and she mentioned that she saw cows when she was traveling, <laughs> which surprised her. I'm oh, speaking of um, like, like you're saying about like Saki. Now. Remember, um, in the order win from us, where you was talking about sheep in the field. <laughs> yeah. I think they're probably surprised by seeing it sometimes because. You don't really think of what other animals are in other countries sometimes, mm-hmm. uh, unless it's like yeah. a part of the country's identity, like Australia with kangaroos. I don't know. But yeah. My my first ever interaction with idols was Goose Goose in London in 2017. Um, I think that was where I first ever met Kelly because she was doing yes. interviews in the in the line. I saw. And that. I had the VIP ticket, and it quite cheap considering for the ticket the. The whole queuing system was a bar lake. The venue was just way too small. I won't get into that. Um, mm-hmm. But apart from that, it was really, really nice to do the little handshake. It was a bit too quick for my liking because they sold a lot more VIP tickets than I thought. There was probably more than half the crowd actually had VIP tickets. Um, but it was still really, really fun anyway. Mm. And so Yuki's my favourite member. And I remember being on her side of the stage and I was wearing one of my old Takashi Ai t-shirts in yellow. So I was like jumping as high as I could. <laughs> and she was just like smiling all the time and it was just so much fun. And then my other time meeting any of my favorite Japanese musicians was when I saw the Gazette in 2019. That was really, really fun. And mm-hmm. con- But their handshake event was after the concert. So I would have expected them to be absolutely exhausted, but they were just, I think they were on a high from the concert and they were just so, so funny to like quickly speak to and things. And um, their bassist, he was just like saluting me, which was really, really fun. Mm-hmm. And I was wearing my Berry's Corbel t-shirt and they were like, oh, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I didn't realise. So it was, it was a really, really good event. Really, really enjoyed it. I haven't managed to do any like checky events though, which I'd really, really love to do. I think if you go see the Chroma, definitely try and get a checky event with them because I mean I do like doing checky with Nacroma. I mean I've got a few of them, so yeah. but yeah. Saki was really nice and Saki's English is she is so good at English now as well. When I last saw her, which was at Indie Idol Infamous. She, it was so good. She came around Easter as well, so and she was delighted by it because Saki loves sweet. And Easter doesn't really happen in Japan either, so it was nice for her to see and experience that. And I think she had, I yeah. think people gave her Easter egg gifts and whatnot. But no, um, the Juice Juice event was my sister's first idol event. And we were the last few to come in for the VIP bit for the handshakes and everything. So we were all way in back. But Chantel. Chantel. Went- Yep. Yeah, Chantel, when she got to Sayuki, <laughs> Chantel. at the time Chantel had, I think, green hair, so Sayuki was just like, <gasps> to her hair and then pointing at Akari, because Akari's colour is obviously green, and Sayuki just yeah. got it. Sayuki really was a ball of energy at that event, and, yeah. and it made me fall in love with her, to be honest. <laughs> it was so nice. So my first um, idol event would have been in the idol and infamous oh um because i've wow. like i've said i am more kind of punk and more rock so i i was more into that kind of stuff the the reason why i went to the the idol and infamous tour actually originally was purely because how if you live in the uk especially you should not ever be fucking picky about what you go and listen to <laughs> so you need to go to every fucking gig no matter what, whether you like them or have heard of them or not, go, go. Mm-hmm. I I knew about um, Saki from obviously, and I knew about Garuda from Mel and Bataki and Gogo, and I knew most most importantly about Hanako. Um, so mm. it was kind of like I'm definitely going to it. 
like without a shadow of a doubt. But that's the first gig that I went to. My first checky encounter was actually it was before the show, and I spotted um, and I might butcher this, in which case I do apologise. But <laughs> um, Rukatama. Yeah, Rukatama. Yeah, that's how you pronounce so, it. So Rukatama. I noticed her around the. Um, you know when you walked in, if you paid for, if you paid the money and you went in and you got the poster, as soon as you went in and they were signing the poster, I noticed her stood there and I thought, that's Ruka Tama from uh, Melon Bataki Agogo. It's Ruka. So I went up to her and I just said, look, would it be possible to get a photo with you um, before the show started? And I was half expecting her to just say, yeah, yeah, okay. And I was going to have my friend Dale kind of take the photo. But she actually pulled out um, an Instax camera. <laughs> so she pulled one out so I, I was just like oh fuck okay and um, and obviously so she took the checky and then I offered her money for that checky and she wouldn't take it she wouldn't take it so but she I do believe she was selling her she was selling like a little CD yeah. uh, during the event and so I gave the money for that instead but my my that was my very first checky was Rukatana <laughs> Uh, yeah, purely there from the fact of just being like, I know you, <laughs> like I I recognise you. But I was going to say that was my definitely my first checky. The uh, when I went to go and see Mute Monster in twenty eighteen, I think it was, they had checky there, but I didn't buy it. My friend Dale, funnily enough, who isn't into it, bought it because he thought it was really cool to see a Polaroid again. <laughs> So he bought it, and still to this day, and he's my best friend, but he's still to this day, he carries it in his wallet. Oh, that's cute. Check it. He doesn't care, give a fuck about Japanese music, but in his wallet, he carries two checkies. One from Mutant Monster, from that tour, and one from Hanako that he took during the in the Idol and Infamous that I paid for <laughs> just to get him to do it. And it's the photo, you know, when Hanika was doing that one, it wasn't the destroy checky, it was kind of like nice checky. Yeah, yeah. And he got that one. He's got that one. And I love it. She did a, it's so a real reminder. The ghost checky one she does is so cute. But Rukatama is a really fun one to do checky with. Like I really like talking to her. Her English yeah. was so good. She after the event when everybody was st- well, I mean, I saw him in Birmingham. And when we were all stood outside the Sunflower Lounge, um me and Dale obviously were shit faced. And getting bladdered, and no idols were hurt, just so you know. <laughs> but um, we were absolutely bladdered. But we were stood out there, and bless her, Rukatama was looking on Dale's phone. Dale, when he gets drunk, he likes showing photos of his daughter, who is like um, three, four, four maybe? Four, I think. Four, I should know that. But he was just flicking through the photos, and she was just going, oh, so cute, so cute, so cute. And, and he didn't have a fucking clue who she was. <laughs> And I'm stood there watching this thinking, this is so bizarre and unreal. And once Rukatama got in there, I went, that's Rukatama from Melon Bataki Agogo. And he went, so? I was like, she's just said your daughter's beautiful. You should be fucking honoured, mate. I'm, like, I'm going to put a correction there, in there. Like I said about the checkies for Mutant Monster. That was 2019, because I remember selling them in 2019 for Isn't I remember them in 2018, seeing only in 2018. But... I still want My to apologies. speak of like the mutant monster check it. Like every now and then, um, like I don't know if it was every show, and um, there was um, like, at the time they had tall manager Toji, and there was like so many good ones that I'll call it the winning checky. Anyone gets that, you're the winner of that show. <laughs> I remember in it was like it was 2019, and it was their final show, I believe, in Manchester, and they were playing at Jimmy's. My friend Ali, he bought um. They were selling a leather jacket that they'd all signed. Oh, wow. They were selling oh, a leather jacket Jesus. that they'd signed. And my, and my mate Ali, he bought it. It was like 400 quid. <gasps> he bought it. And I've got a photo of him wearing it. I've not got it with me right now. But I wow. will fucking put it up on Twitter when I find no, I know it. Who you and mean. I'll tag him in it. That has to Ali, be a beautiful jacket. It was gorgeous. Oh, it's so oh. well because he's a thin guy and he's a beautiful guy. But I will put that up. And Ali, if you listen to this, <laughs> miss you, I miss you. Yeah. Okay, um, my I'm going to talk about my first idol experience. Um, uh, mine was um, around 20, 
2017. That was my first Hive, Hive Japan experience. I was talking to like they call the sick fly, and um, like I was wearing a crossfade shirt at the time because they were like they were sort of like sounded like crossfade, and they were like, like nice to me. Oh, crossfade and all that, and face and face at the time, Kirito. Um, like he. No, it's all oh, crossfade, and then um, like you show me um his um bass pick that he got from one of the crossfade shows at that time, and then after them you had um a group called um I know that sadly they debunked um like one of them Sakurana she's in a couple of other projects like, on the deer stage, and um like, they were a group called um, Moso Calibration. Oh, oh, I love them. Yeah, oh. and that they they did, and there were like a JPU release at the time when they did their like, world greatest hits. And um, like yeah. with JPU, I bought the greatest hits CD with all their singles that they got, and some of them were the like, same were instrumentals. And we got given one, like two tickets. One was to meet them, like have a handshake, and then the other was to like have a check in with one of the members. Mm -hmm. And I felt so awkward, like trying to talk. And then Mahara, she she was their translator, and um, like she asked me, "What's your favourite song?" Like, <laughs> Think what song it was, <laughs> and um, and then um, like my first copy that I had was um, a member called Hakeem and Naya. Like, I said, like, which one do you want to talk about? I said, like, one with the big <laughs> and later, um, when it's not a check, it was a group photo. Um, and they were, they were there in 2016 that and um, they're a punk pop punk band, they were called Broken Doll, and they had their own booth. And um, one thing they didn't recognize me, but they recognized Peter, my brother, and what with his um hat that he was wearing. So we all had a group photo. Uh, I had a group photo, then Pete had his. Uh, that was my first experience. What was your first CD that you ever bought? Japanese CD? Oh, Magi Deskaska by Morning Musume. Yeah, my first one was Morning Musume with Magi Deskaska. That was the first CD I bought. Like, um, I had a job at the time, so it was for my own money and everything. And I bought it on eBay. <laughs> yeah, I still have it because it's very special to me. It was the first song for the ninth generation. It was the first new generation that I had witnessed enter into Morning Must Mate as a fan. And I loved it. And I used to take it to work with me. And um, I was a taxi passenger assistant, so I helped kids get to school, like to make sure that they didn't get rowdy in the car for the taxi driver. And we would all play our own music and I forced them to listen to it. <laughs> you all the words. It was so fun. But yeah, that was my first ever CD. And I got yeah. the Suzuki Canon version, a uh, Type E, I think. Um, so it's got a DVD in, in it that's got, like, Suzuki Canon's co comments on becoming a member of Monomous May. It was a very, very special release for a lot of people because it was the first generation in many years for the group. First new members after s five years of no new members. So, yeah. Mine was from the same group, Mari Muzume. Um, I'd been a fan since like 2007, but I didn't really feel confident in buying CDs mm. until a bit later on down the line because I wasn't used to doing like online shopping, so I wasn't sure where the best place was to buy CDs. And my first single I ever bought was Waka Teka Take a Chance. Um, even though it's not the most amazing song from Mari Muzume, I really <laughs> wanted to support them because I went through such a big, massive... Mm. fangirling phase before the EDM got recycled and <laughs> underwhelming um I think I got the cover with Mizuki on it because she was my she is my favorite morning Musume member and it was just really really nice to have it like in the little single and then having the little photo card with it mm. I can't remember who I got though I think I got Haruka Kudo Haruka which I was happy with and my favorite b-side from that single was Futsu no Shoujo A with Tanaka Rain and Masaki and Kudo Haruka, because it reminded me of Vampire Night for some reason. <laughs> when I listened to the song, so it's, it's really, really good. I'm pretty sure, I think the first CD I ever bought, I think it was Checkmate, the album Checkmate by Namie Amaro. Mm. Namie Amaro, because I believe I bought it because a podcast I used to listen to called Gaijin Kampai, they had recommended it at one point or it had been discussed on there. And I remember thinking, I'll listen to that. I'll listen to that. And I bought it for that. I'm pretty sure that's the first one I bought. I've been, even to this day, I go back and I 
I'm building up collections of music that I used to listen to back in the day. Now I have money for it. Mm. So I am going through and rebuying things. So if it's a case of like the first CD I think I bought, it was that. Not a case of like what's the earliest CD you have, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, I'm pretty sure the first one was Nami Amaro's Checkmate, which if you've not listened to it, don't. Because going back now, it's not aged well at all. (laughs) Um... It's it's surprising sometimes to see how far music comes, like especially in the Japanese music industry, because they are big fans of fads. If you listen to that, that sounds like an album that came out in like it's got to be about two thousand nine, two thousand ten, <laughs> two thousand eight, or something like that. Mm. It sounds like it, like it's <laughs> not aged well at all. But she oh. did a track with the Korean group after school, um, and so oh. that was kind of one of the things that was kind of like oh. She's done, it was mainly an album that she did with all different artists. Mm. Um, she did like a Yamapi, if you've heard of him, like a lot of kind of yep. like musicians who were back in the day that I, I'm not going to say important, but were relevant at the mm. time. And you listen to it now and you think, what the fuck is this? <laughs> to be honest, when I look back at Morning Must Made's early discography, like Morning Coffee and I Know Tanner, you can hear how much it's aged. You know. Yeah. It's- not like it's not good now it was definitely a 90s kind of sound i mean like to a degree even when i revolution 21 but that's why they updated it so they could keep singing the fucker (laughs) my probably the first thing you ever bought first japanese cd was um like it was i saw it in hmv it was the um album pocalized by um cross faith which came out in 2014. I, I bought that album because after like, down in Festival UK 2014, I just I just liked that band so much, and I thought I'm going to look for that, that album, and then just and it was That's just cool. so like, yeah, that was my like I said my first Japanese band I ever saw, but I thought I want to look for that album because I saw it in you know, other places, and I thought I've got to look for it somewhere, and I found it in my local HMV, I think it was. So I know we me and Kelly were discussing it backstage. Like, when I say backstage behind the scenes, um, like we're talking about at one point, we're talking about May cafes. I just want to know, like, not only like what people think of May cafes, but interactions with like like been to May cafes, that sort of thing. Like, if it's just like Hype Japan or whatever. And speaking of May cafes, I'm, I'm gonna shout, can I have a shout out? Like, over the last week or so, and um, they've been doing like announcing the Who's Who? It's um, the May Cafe Kijo, which is just a brand new May Cafe, which is like a sort of demon feel style May Cafe. And they've like introducing each staff member or maid for the last week, like every two days. So they're a UK based one. So mm. they're brand demon. new. And they've been following since um, July, apparently, like coming out since July. And they've been slowly introducing maids and all that. So give them support because they Definitely yeah, they're all brand new and everything. So they're mm. just like they're really just getting their feet. Sponsor in. us. Yeah. <laughs> Sponsor us. We're giving you a fucking shout out. Sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> I know Pat says that he's not been to a main cafe yet. Have you, Jim? Um I've never been to a proper made event. Um, but there is a anime convention that I go to in Newcastle called anime attacks Mm -hmm. and they're a pretty small event but it's quite a nice chilled out area and there is a uk based maid cafe called um mayan maids um yeah they're i think they're more north east like northern based which is really really nice and um i've bought a few of their merch and they've been really really lovely and like like personalised messages and letters and things. Yeah. And their interaction on social media is really, really good as well. So you feel like immersed in their own like little ma- maid world. Um, but sadly, when I've gone to Anime Attacks, their bookings have gone straight away. So I haven't actually managed to book um, a slot at a maid cafe yet, but I definitely want to at some point, whether it's May and Maids or Maids of England, I'd love to go to one. Just yeah. to see, just I to want have to the do, experience. I want, to it, do, so. I want to do Maids of England. We all need to do it. Mm. Go to the round table. <laughs> be maids of yes. England. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. So, um, obviously, I've been to I My Maid twice yeah. at Hyper Japan. I've not been to Maids of England, though, but um, I really liked I My Maid. Really nice. I like the atmosphere. I played games with them. I didn't have any of the food or anything because it's a very limited menu at conventions. And usually the menus consist of stuff which I don't like. It's got doliaki, but they're usually like 
serve it with whipped cream or something. And at that point, I've eaten, so I don't want anything. I don't want a snack or anything. Stuff but, with idle work, like most maid cafes do, like sort of idle wish. Yeah. No, they play games and everything, which I really like. And then when you win, for, uh, I'm my maid one, you can like hit them with a big hammer, like a, a soft, <laughs> squishy, squishy <laughs> hammer, a blow up hammer. And, um, I'm very gentle. I don't like hurting them. I'm not. I'm not like Matt. And then you can do a checky with them. But when I was in Japan, I went to Maid Dreaming, oh um, which is one of the most well-known maid cafes yeah. in Japan. And it was nice. I really enjoyed the experience. First time. The second one, we went to a quieter one, and I was with my friend, and it wasn't as good as the experience I'd had like the day before. And they are very expensive. The food is very nice though, and very cute. I really liked it. They perform sometimes as well when you're there. And you can do like a little lottery where you can like win something like a little badge or something, which is nice. And when when you go, you're allowed to pick like a freebie thing that you have. Like you can either get ears or a clear file or a badge or something. And at the end of it, you can get a checkie with one of the maids or Mm. just normal picture. So, yeah, I enjoyed my experience. I, I enjoy it in Japan. I'd like to try other maid cafes though of course to see how they fare and everything yeah. but May Dreaming is definitely one of the most well-known ones and one of the easier to find ones as well which is why I went twice. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, like my first maid experience was I'm a maid in 2017 I've been here three times and um, every time like me and Pete have done the tradition every time we go we didn't do it in 2019 like every year we go to home Japan we've got to do a maid cafe every time so it's always a great laugh like playing games and having a checky and so on they design it for you that's the other yeah. thing it's a great experience <laughs> that's all i can think of like because i also took like last sunday I took part in a patreon maze of england thing and it was like <laughs> playing um jack box that was funny as hell <laughs> That is so, so, that yeah, is and it's live on Twitch too. But you, you also collect stuff for Maids in England, don't you, Andrew? You really support. Yeah, you right. really do help them out. Yeah, and also same with me. Me, is it me or mine? I can't pronounce it. Sorry. Uh, I think it's Mayan. Yeah, mine. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, that's how I pronounce it. Mayan. Yeah, I've helped them out a couple of times. So that's another thing. They do great stuff, like written letters and so on. So it's that's all I can think of. My friend who lives in Japan, she she still supports maids of England, even though she's not living here anymore. And she does really support them, and she still gets stuff like bromides and whatnot in the mail for maids of England. And so it's like I'm sure when I experience maids of England, eventually I'll start supporting yeah. them. Yeah. Maids of England, uh, let's collaborate. That was so fun. <laughs> let's collab. Yeah, woe to the maids of England. You know what I mean? Maids of the Round Table. Yes. Made of the round table. Let's. Oh, you know what I mean? Come on. <laughs> You're missing out. Do you know how fantastic we are? You know what I mean? What the fuck are you doing? You're wasting your fucking time. What are you doing? Oh, God. Uh, the, um, um, no. Um, we love you. We yeah, love you mate. Yeah. We're just joking. Don't listen to me. I'm a fucking idiot. One day yeah. we will all go to a maid cafe together. Maybe one yeah. day. Will become the maids of Maid Cafe. <laughs> you know what? One day we're all going to Japan together. You know that, don't you? Yay! Yay. We've all got to go to Japan. Oh, yes. <laughs> I will, we will do a tour of the Izakayas. Oh, yes. <laughs> tour of the Izakayas. Izakayas be... and Maid Cafes. Can you imagine the fantastic trip we'd have? I'm going to be the sober one. I'm going to have to help you all get back. <laughs> You're going to have to be the fucking sensible one. Because it won't be me. When, I might yeah. be older, but I shall not be. <laughs> if I could drive, I'd be the designated driver, but no, I'm just a designated, don't go in that fucking bar. No, Matt, come back. I'm the, I'm the designated <laughs> adult. Um, are you sure you want to do that? You're going to fucking embarrass yourself. All of you and me, pack it in. <laughs> yeah. Now, oh, now, we yeah. do We do all need to do it. And we, we need to go to, to karaoke bars as well. Yes, that's oh, what yeah. we do. Yeah. And, yes. Oh, no, wait, I did go to a karaoke bar, but I went on my own. I forgot that. It was so fun. <laughs> but, oh, but an hour is not well, enough. Well, I can't, well, I can't no. have fun if you do it alone. I'll do it when a great score and just scream down the mic. <laughs> <laughs> 
another question. Um, like, like merch, it's your Kelly's Rhino. <laughs> I'll let you talk about this one, the merch stuff, so like the questions. Oh, oh merchandise yeah, and yeah. discussing our favourite types of merchandise. And if we've received any already in the new year, which, yes, I have. It's all been satanic punish. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Of course, I've got two um, like, since since the last recording. I've got the Miho free Christmas one that arrived mm -hmm. last week. And um, Dear Moonlight by Henry, the first photo book. And also, uh, at the same time, the same day, Kelly's shirt arrived, which I'm wearing right yeah. now. <laughs> Not That's my shirt really. anymore, it's Andrew's. Well, I mean the shirt that you... Yeah. Used, so... I've literally had satanic punish stuff like checky and it's all come really fast actually which I'm surprised by um, because the last few ones I've gotten from satanic punish came like within two months <laughs> like since it had been sent so to have it come like about a week or two weeks after it had been sent from when I ordered it that's nice so I've nearly got all of the CDs I've got one more to go so, so yeah just one more song and then I've got all of them and I got another checky from them as well. So I'm I'm slowly building up my collection. I'm supporting them. I like them. When I like a group, I want to collect everything. But I have bought Hokago Princess's most recent album because even though it does not have really anything new on it. No surprises there. But I collect Hokago Princess stuff. So it makes sense I'd buy it. And it's signed as well. So there's that. <laughs> But that's a lot of money gone. It's like, it's really annoying. That was 5,000 fucking yen. Wow. Well, I mean, and then I've got, because it's going through Tenso, because it won't come straight to England. <laughs> that's going to be extra shipping on top. Yeah. I have not had any idle stuff come through. I have... Well, you're not a true fan then. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck idols. Um... <laughs> oh... Get Fuck out! Fuck You're fired. <laughs> this table Fuck is Fuck not for the you. Listeners. Fuck everybody. Um, I have had. Get off the table. I've not. I've not built. I've not bought anything. I, funnily enough, I do actually. I have a basket full of Idle Underworld. <laughs> I just need to go through with it. It's is a bit that... like. It's a bit like kind of like the commitment issue, I suppose. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit like I've got so much in there. Fuck! It's going to cost a lot of money. <laughs> um, yeah. I the only thing I've had actually turn up that's Japanese related uh, in the new year is that I'm continuing to grow my. When I mentioned earlier that I am trying to kind of go back and collect a lot of the music that I listened to when I was younger, I had a, a Yumi Hamasaki CD turn up, which is Guilty, which was 2006, and it's probably wow. my favorite um, Yumi Hamasaki album because I remember what I was doing when it came out. And I tend to think that for me, sometimes music can be a, as ridiculous as it might sound, it can sometimes be a portal to remind you kind of like who you were when it came out and kind of takes you back to that time. That was definitely one of those albums. Mm -hmm. So I bought that and that cost, it's always expensive to, to kind of get albums over here. But I was able to pick that one up, and I was, I'm quite fortunate it's in good condition. So I'm continuing that. That's the only thing that I've actually bought this year so far. But yes, um, Derek, if you're listening, you send me Strong Zero, I'll spend a fucking lot of money on your store. <laughs> <laughs> um, for me this year, I actually haven't bought any item merch yet. I am planning on getting quite a bit of zombie powder merch at some point when I've got money. But the last bit of idol merch that I received was um, Necronom Idol Checky. Um, mm. They did a, a Checky set where they were like dressed in like Yukatas. That was a really lovely photo set. And then I got a signed one from Nana. Yes. Oh, Nana. Oh, nice. Yeah. Love the group. Yeah. Yeah. She's so cute. They were like really good. The only the only downside was it took re it, it took about two or three months for them to arrive. Though they took quite a long time. Ricky, like, Ricky is very busy, so he doesn't send everything out. Oh, I didn't. I didn't buy them from Idol Underworld. I bought them from their official bank account. Yeah, Ricky. Ricky doesn't. Ah, send right. Them straight away, okay. Ricky. Um, he probably has yeah. a backlog of a lot of stuff, so it takes a few right. months. Yeah. To send out. I mean, I think I've recently bought something from yeah. there. I don't know yet. I, I yeah. Forget. Yeah, bought the checkies from their studio, the dark studio or whatever. Like, yeah. At the beginning of the year, so I'm waiting yeah, for it. I got the confirmation email to say it should be shipped or arriving by so-and-so date, and then, like, nearly Don't a month had passed. 
Yeah, and I, I just kind of messaged them saying, I haven't received anything yet. Is everything okay? And then they just like reply back saying, we're just a bit back dated with orders but it'll come as soon as possible and then yeah. they arrived shortly after so i was very very happy with them and i'll definitely order more clecky oh. but the trouble is is a uh, clecky especially hamari's clecky <laughs> sells out really really fast it oh god it does yeah now yeah. uh, vicky vicky because he's mostly working alone i think he probably yeah. does have someone behind the scenes yeah but- he yeah it's it's backlogged by quite no, a bit so if you're it's not going to be sent straight away it's yeah just one of those things but to be honest he does send when he does send it it gets too quickly and yeah that's good very little damage or anything like that like yeah. so i'm i'm happy with bank camp half time i just know not to <laughs> want it straight away what about passcode you got your passcode cd as well yeah i've got the oh yeah I don't know whether I technically count that as merch. I think of merch is more like the incentives. Understood. Outside of music, I guess. That's what I, I think, think of it as CDs as well, to be honest. Yeah. Mate, but everyone thinks yeah. of merch differently, so. Yeah. Happy to be. And I've bought a lot of uh, Dreamcatcher photo cards as well. Because mm. <laughs> there's a lot of like Facebook groups that I follow. The only downside is if some of them charge way too much fucking money oh, for yeah. them. They do. It's the same yeah. thing as one, yeah. and it pisses me off. It's like, why? It's. I think it's because, especially because the Dreamcatcher community is still actually quite a very small community. Yeah, they're not a very popular K-pop group, to be honest. As much as we would like them to be popular, yeah. they aren't, and yeah. it's just one of those things. They don't have stereotypical music that's popular no. in Korea. Like it's it's Korean pop, but it's yeah. not popular Korean pop that they yeah. make. Let's the, be fair though. All they need to do is release Japanese vocals, and they fucking. Go matters. They, they, have, actually, they do have a couple of Japanese releases. Um, well, that's what I mean. Like I just, I just completely rebrand them as a Japanese <laughs> group. <laughs> yeah. The only downside with collecting Dreamcatcher though is if you're wanting to buy, they're like really early albums. They're not actually in print anymore. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so you'd have to like bid for them or buy them on eBay. But even then, people overcharge them way too much. You know, I think yeah, it's just and that's for them empty, like no card yeah. or anything with them. If they. Yeah. Can't cards if they're still and um, if they're still sealed they put them up like yeah. quite a lot and people get very greedy and very stupid to be yeah. honest with these sorts of things yeah. somebody tried selling one of the dream catcher albums without the fucking cd in <gasps> it had the photo card and everything in but it didn't have a cd and they were like charging it as if it had like fifty thousand cds in it and i'm like no, no. that's not how it works mate no. Fuck off. <laughs> Sound, sounds fucking normal that yeah sadly yeah people be profiting on those things and it's yeah. again it's one of the downsides to it and it's, yeah. it's like people will not sell you their cards or swap cards with you if you do not have like an instagram or something showing that you've got yeah. the cards or videos people are very paranoid because a lot of people are ripping each other off to be honest so. yeah so following on <laughs> the merch thing what is your favourite type of merch to collect. I think I've asked this on Twitter anyway as well to everyone else. But, like, my type of merch that I collect, like, what I prefer to collect, like, is very... It flip-flops between everything. Like, right now I'm really into checky. But other times I want, like, figure stand keychains. But other times I like trading cards. It's why I collect Eyes 1 stuff, because I like trading cards. (laughs) But yeah, like, what is your favourite type of merch to collect? Like, again, mine is checky in a minute. Okay. So for me, I would always prefer, if I can, realistically, if I can, I will always go for CDs because I, I enjoy looking through the booklets. I enjoy reading kind of what I can. Like, I enjoy physically holding music. I'm, I'm still I'm... not, I'm still not fully immersed in the full digital world. So I still mm. like to hold music physically if I can. If I cannot buy the CD, if I cannot have the CD, I enjoy um, wristbands because I do like to kind of, when I'm out prior to all of this shit, I will be in a pub or I will go on holiday or something wearing uh, wristbands. I like to kind of wear that, pa- as like with the tattoos, I like to wear that passion on me. I like to let people know that that's what I'm into. Whether they fucking like it or not, so yeah. But <laughs> failing that, I my third would be Checky. But the problem with Checky is I love having the photos 
with the artist. I, I like, I love the idea of Checky, but realistically, it just goes into a little folder and it fucking hides away. And the only time I actually use Checky is when I photocop, like when I scan it to use it as profile pictures. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do love Checky. But but those those are probably my if if I had to go with anything I would say CDs mean the most to me because sometimes I like to just look at that and just think that mm. that's my collection that is that is what I hold most valuable you know and it's all it's all unimportant because one day I'll die and all that shit's going to be left for some cunt to deal with that's not yeah, going to have a clue have and it's and it's all going and it's all going to the RSPCA I guarantee you. But you know what I mean? <laughs> but for right now, that's what it's all about, you know? I mean, I'm the same. I love my CDs and I like to just lay, if it's, if it's a specific group, I'll just lay them out and I'll just look at them all and I'll open them all. And I like looking at how the CDs are different, how they're decorated differently. Can, her cargo princesses especially, I like seeing how different they are depending on their eras. So their first in this era versus their major debut era versus their second indies era i like seeing how each cd has been made and how they differentiate to each other and just how they look different it's like in their first indies era when their company completely split and they went away from i get their cds changed slightly the cds look completely different to how they were for the first few singles and then major debut definitely differentiated and then second indies era very different as well so I just like seeing that, and as you said, booklets, and I just like holding the physical media too. Yeah, I do agree on the CD thing. Yeah, I'm on, on, on a CD too. You have a CD? Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, you're a human. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's a fucking audio disc. My <laughs> <laughs> favourite like, thing right now is um, like, um, like, is CDs. I'm like, unless I'm like, I really want to get something that's been out for ages and need to find them. If it's on proxy sites, I'm a bit skeptic about proxies, but because I don't know how expensive they'll be, sort of thing. Another thing that I'm quite a fan of all the time is um is actually the um t-shirts. Towels I'll, I'll get if if it's a like if it's a rare thing because you don't very rarely see towels around here or on websites but for me it's a t-shirt it's another way to support them as well as just cds yeah that's all i can think of unless it's a special item like if it's a cassette tape or whatever andrew you're doing an amazing job at wearing a different shirt every time we do one of these as well so you're always repping a group shirt which i love if it's japanese I, i'm still repping shirts so <laughs> i think i think we should start um, mixing things up so i reckon we should all send each other t-shirts so what the next episode I'm wearing Kelly's t shirt. Um, <laughs> Jenny's Jenny's wearing Andrew's t shirt. Andrew's wearing Jenny's t shirt. You know what I mean? Just just completely kind of mix things up. Next episode I might be wearing a dress. Who the fuck does? <laughs> like, yeah. Let's, yeah, I can um, send you a dress. Let's, let's mix it mix things up a bit, you know what I mean? Yeah. But we've got you know, yeah. fuck it. Why why make this serious? It doesn't have to be <laughs> want my dress back though <laughs> you'll be fine yeah. I'd even wash it I'd even wash it <laughs> yay there's a, there's a photo not, it's not online but of me wearing a corset so I won't share it Andrew, <laughs> yeah. Andrew you've, you've mentioned it now we're going to be looking for it Andrew, I want to see I'll that send it later but you're on it send it to me Andrew public, so. send it to me at the time I hated yeah. it. If we get to 500 followers or 250, we will put up a picture of Andrew in a corset. <laughs> he lets us. <laughs> We've got to have his consent, obviously. Yeah. Andrew, <laughs> send me the photo of you in a corset and I'll just fucking send it to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> this is back in 2013, so... <laughs> mm. Oh, hang on. Oh, no, it's fine. You were of age. It's fine. <laughs> Oh, anyway, well, fuck me, that's taken a dark turn. So, as that took a turn, shall we turn into the questions? <laughs> yes. yes. Twitter. Let's, let's, let's take all of the Twitter questions. Chantal gave us the most, so we're going to ignore setters, just so you know. No, 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 no. There's one from, answer, probably from Amanda. Answer. That's my reason. So, the um, well, the question that came from Beyonce, I reckon that's Amanda. Uh, do you want to start with Beyonce Senpai's one? 
do it. You, you can do it. Uh, okay. Would you rather fight 100 hamster-sized lions or a lion-sized hamster? The world needs to know. <laughs> and, oh my god. Okay, so this just makes me think of goosebumps. So 100 hamster-sized lions or a lion-sized hamster. Though it, it might seem that they might be little and cute, they will bite your ankles, these little hamster-sized lions. I would rather. I would, I would rather, rather the big fight one. a lion-sized hamster. Yeah, I'd rather fight a lion size handsome because yeah. I can just give it cuddles. <laughs> no, because because if I couldn't defeat it, it'd be big enough that I'd die with honour. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'd at least I'd be like, look at the fucking size of it. Are you taking the piss? You know what I mean? I'm just thinking. I'm 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 retracting that. I'd rather have like a hundred lion size hamsters because yeah. I put them in a cage. You need a hundred cages. <laughs> Plus, if you had a lion-sized hamster, the bite on that bastard would be life. Because <laughs> I've been bit by a hamster. They yeah. have a bite to them. <laughs> they do. And as well as that, you wouldn't be able to find a wheel big enough for it to run on. <laughs> and hamsters are nocturnal as well, so you wouldn't get any sleep. So I'd rather go with the little hamster-sized lions. Yeah, same. So <laughs> Both would kill me. To be fair. Uh, Fuck I you, proper, man. I want, I want proper fight. I just lie down either way. So you, just be like, well, whatever. What's yours, Andrew, for that one? I already said it, but then again, at the same time, like, I've changed it. It's probably a lion sized Lion sized hamster? Yeah. Because, just... uh, yes, they can bite. Don't trust me, the hamster will use time one. And, um, just... Go big or go home, Andrew. Go big or go home. <laughs> it's just like, uh, let them do what they want. <laughs> If they don't attack you, just let them do what they want. So moving on from that, with with a fight in mind, Chantelle asks, who would win a fight, Matt or Watanabe? Please, everyone at the round table, cash your votes. <laughs> so Matt, you're out of this one. <laughs> in a fight, who would win, Matt or Watanabe? I think it... it... <laughs> I think it'd be I don't know what an army to be honest <laughs> I think it'd just like it wouldn't even be a fight Matt would just see him and what an army would do something like he'd be like okay I'm getting rid of this group just for you and then Matt would be defeated gets rid of Ghost of the Beds gets do rid I... of BIS gets rid of Fish hang on do I not get a fucking say on this at all you can after we've all had a verdict so shush mm. <laughs> what do you think Jenny I think Matt would need Dutch courage to like proper go for him. Well, Going, I fucking luckily, hate you. <laughs> luckily, Matt's bloodstream is about ninety percent alcohol, so he already has the Dutch courage in him. His blood is absinthe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's also um, his blood is also part Audi Heineken ripoff. Uh, I think you mean Denvelde. I've drank all of them. They were, they're spot on. That's good. Yeah. He'd need a few more strong zeros, though, I think, yeah. before going up against Watanabe. But then Watanabe would just be like, okay, I'm pulling the plug on this group for you. Or I'm getting rid of this member for you. <laughs> Poor Louis, career ended. Uh, and Andrew's gone, so I can't get his verdict right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, I'm not even allowed to... Chantal, if you're listening to this, I'm not even allowed to defend myself. You can defend yourself now, because Andrew's not here. <laughs> I can defend myself now, can I? Yeah, I'll, right. I'll allow it. <laughs> me, against, me against Watanabe, I'd chin the cunt. <laughs> and then he'd go, you can lick I've, my balls. I've already been fucked over by the cunt enough. Right? <laughs> I've already been fucked over by his little audition camps, right? <laughs> There's no more he could do to me, realistically, <laughs> right? Watanabe, I know you're not listening. But if you were, mm. you get this fucker because you've broken my heart with the second disbandment of Biz. <laughs> oh, so you broke now I just heart. now I just ruin you. <laughs> and so Chantel, if you're listening, what's an army's got nothing to lose by beating me, <laughs> but I, but I've got everything to gain by beating him. Andrew, who do you think could win? What's an army or Matt <laughs> in a fight? In a fight, um. If you think of like, I know, I know you're sound... Andrew, Andrew, before you what? answer, I'm just letting you know, you will never be doing this podcast with Watanabe. 
If it had been for physical wars, it would have been Matt. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, you'll, you'll win that for physical, but I don't know about other things, so I'm not going to say no more. <laughs> <laughs> a little tumble with what an are they, eh, Matt? Well done, Chantel. You have almost divided the round table. Into four. <laughs> you split like a pizza. Or a semi Like a pizza, like a pizza bit. Like a pizza bit. Like a pizza bit. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she also gave us another question. She, she's actually got three more questions, so... If we okay. could make a dream group, regardless of management and affiliation, who would the members be? Oh. Oh. This is a fucking hard question, isn't it? It is a hard question because she didn't. She said members, but she doesn't say if that's non-idol or idol. Because uh, I'd say any. I'd say any. Just put okay. any. Yeah, you can make your dream oh. idol group. I had, so I had... Andrews is going to be Miho, with Miho, with Miho, with Miho. <laughs> And maybe Watanabe. Max is going to be Watanabe. Uh, it fucking won't be. <laughs> it won't. No, I won't. Oh. Vocal wise, it would be Fuki of Unlucky Morpheus. So not Miho. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Miho of Love Bites for Bass, yes. There we go. <laughs> yeah. She's here. Guitarist will be Saki. What, be Saki? Me. Which group? <laughs> I just I just said it's Saki of Mary's blood. Oh lovely. Yep. Yeah, 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 Mary's blood. And then it would be um like Mayo who used to be who's done guest keyboards for um like Ground Zero for Marlus Ground Zero EP, Mayo. He used to be in like Bring which was Fuki's old band too on keyboard. Other guitarists would be um oh bloody hell, um it would be um I'll put Ryu. Of Bloodstained Child, and drums would be um, Mari of um, Mary's Blood too. <laughs> nice, so a solid, powerful band you've got there. Yeah, damn. I think that they're my choices, so nice. Fuck. I know it's difficult. Okay, so um, I'm gonna have Double Land, Saki, Saki of Double Land, <laughs> because Absolute Powerhouse also does gymnastics on the stage, so she'll be yeah. my centre. She'll be my centre of the group. Um, yeah. She'll be like lead singer, especially. But along with her gymnastics, we're going to have Ikata Erina as well because she can do gymnastics. Yeah, so she's we're fabulous. Two, we're going to have two gymnastics idols, and Eripon is a great dancer as well. So we've got dancing down power. Eripon doesn't need to sing. My baby doesn't need to sing because she can't, but she doesn't need to. I'm mm. also going to throw in Sasaki Miho because I love her from Ready to Kiss. So I've got two members who can't sing, and then <laughs> Saki of Double N. Mm. Jenny, you're going to be in there. You're going. To, oh, you're gonna, thank you're you. You're going to be this idol group because yes, yes, we we need more idols. Who? Yes. It, okay. I love it when I do see in a Japanese idol group a foreign idol. Doesn't matter where they've come from, but if if they're just like they're from another yeah. country, they've moved to Japan, you know, and they've decided to go into an idol. I love seeing it. It's nice because. Then we have a small amount of diversity, at least. Uh, but Jenny, you will also be with Saki on the lead vocal, so yes. So and then who else would I have? Because I like five member groups, so I've got four members already. Yeah. I need one more member. Who would it be? I'm trying to think. I, I probably Micah from Hope Pre as well, to be honest, because mm. I I think it'd be good to have three strong vocalists and then two dancers and sub vocalists so i mean i don't like how line distribution is in japan but i think it, that would be a fairly good one because it'd be visually yeah. pleasing but also mm. they're all strong in certain aspects in my opinion yeah so yeah there we go there's my idol, idol group um saki of double and micah from hokago princess jenny from jenny in Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> To Erina from Morning Musume and um, Suzaki Miho from Ready to Kiss. That's my idol group. I would have Hiroto Komoto from the Blue Hearts and the Crow Magnons. Mm -hmm. I would have Ray from Nokachuawa. Oh. Yes. And Burst Girl. Oh. 
I would have Yuna from Passcode. I knew you'd have Yuna from Passcode. I would have Hanako-san. And I would have... Because those are four very strong vocals. You need a weak mm. one. You need a weak link that everyone loves because they're the underdog. Fuck. I'd have... Um, I'd have something to balance it out, like... Um, I mean, you could have Himari from Necrono Idol. It's not... <laughs> Nah, you're right. No, no, no. Ricky, Ricky can keep her. Fuck him. I'd have, um, I'd have to have somebody completely fucking different, and it would have to be Ryoko Hirasu, which would be a '90s singer, and she has only ever done pop, but it would just make it a bit more interesting to try and mix it all up. Mm. That would be my group. It'd be mainly screaming, and you want to punch idols to it. You know what I mean? Classic, Matt. <laughs> For me, mine would be more vocally trained. So I wouldn't say they were necessarily an idol group, but more of a female group. Mm. Um, I'd obviously have Takahashi Ai. She'd be absolutely amazing. Plus, she'd be really good at ballads as well. Um, Lisa, I would pick oh. her. That's okay. She's absolutely phenomenal. Plus, she's done a lot of anime openings, so they can branch out in that industry. Um, I've also got also my half from Okago Princess. That would be a good one. I'm also, I was thinking of more like background vocals. I have, um, she's from Arcana Project, Sakuran or Usa. Oh, yeah, I mentioned her earlier. She's yeah, been... yeah. She, she's my favourite member and she's really, really good. And then, hmm, I'd have them um, Suzuki Airi as well. Oh, yes. And I could have, like, I think Lisa would be, like, the forefront. Then I and Airi being, like, the mid vocals and then the rest of the members kind of being at the back. Mm. Okay. Like, like, lighter vocals to balance things out so it's not too powerful. So, yeah, that would be my... Yeah, I'm going to change my thing. I'm going to put, rather than Mari on drums, I'm going to put... Um... Yoshiki of um, X Japan. Ooh. Yoshiki, yeah. oh, Yoshiki. Yeah, right. but yeah. Not only is talented, uh, but on drums, but he's great pianist. And for um, guitar wise, I'm, rather than having Ryu, I'm gonna put um, Sakura of Hagane. Nice. Mm. Yeah, sure. like, okay. Yeah, Sakura of Hagane. It just it just came to my mind for those two. So that would be like a super group, I suppose. Yeah. Yoshiki, Yoshiki is a fantastic drummer. I yeah. Absolutely adore X Japan. Yeah. Absolutely adore them. It just clicked to my mind. Like, I thought, bugger, Yoshiki. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to throw in Ueno Yuka into mine then as well because it's I, I love her. She's a soloist and I would like to actually see her in a group setting. She has a lovely voice. She's great with ballads and everything. She does more poppy songs sometimes, but absolutely mm. don't. So I'd like to see her in a group setting. So following on from that with idols, my sister has asked, if we were idols together, what would our group's theme be? Ooh. I can't say it'd be punching idols because that's Matt's thing. Mm. That'd be Hanako or Yuffie's hot top. <laughs> <laughs> what would our theme be? Because, I mean, we're woke of around table, so could we technically yeah. like be knights? <laughs> I'm kidding. That'd be fun. It would. Yeah. Oh, drinking. <laughs> drinking. Yeah, we'd be drinking idols. We'd be or an um, alt idol group. I don't know. Or an alt idol group. Like we we would definitely be alt idol. Yeah. Mm. Could you imagine me in a fucking Avex group? Yeah. Well, <laughs> bitch is Avex. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, bitch is realistically, Avex. Well, maybe. But realistically, could you see us being mainstream? <laughs> no. <laughs> could, could you, could you see us? Could you see us be signing records in Tower Records? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, come on, guys. I mean, <laughs> could you see us playing at the Budokan? <laughs> I do think it would probably be alcohol then for us if that was our theme, though I'd probably be the sober one. <laughs> our theme would have to be... It wouldn't necessarily have to be alcohol, but I feel like we'd be Larry. Yeah. Yeah. With Loud, you in your face. Where's punches. It, we would... We would. I feel like we would be punk without necessarily the alcohol. <laughs> like we'd be, we'd or we'd be, we'd definitely be all tidal because we'd. Because if I do, if I'm right in thinking, when Biz originally came out with the idea of all tidal, the whole purpose of it, it was it was idols that you could touch. 
Yeah. 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 And, I, and I feel like we would be idols that you could hug and have checky with. And you know punch. I mean? And punch. <laughs> so we would definitely be kind yeah. of like... We'd be the idols that punch you. Yeah. 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 I mean, <laughs> Hanako has already done that. I know, but... Yeah. You know what I mean? You've done that to me. Right, we'd be the idols right. that fight you. That's Matt's yeah. dream. <laughs> Just jump off a stage and fight one of the fans in the crowd. Send me strong zero and I won't fucking fight you. <laughs> well, that. <laughs> but no, um, we would definitely be... We we would be all idol. But the beauty of it was I feel like we bring a lot of the cutesy idol through <laughs> Kelly and through Jenny and we would mix that through the punk and through the rock like me and Andrew. Yeah. Mm. So you would have like the all idol when we will destroy it. Yeah. So, as I said, I believe in the, at the end of the first episode, we will kick your teeth in, or you will thank us for it. Mm. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry, that was it. It was, we are cute as fuck, but we'll kick your teeth in. <laughs> Is that going to be our motto as a group? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cute as fuck, but we'll kick your teeth in. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, would be, that would be it. Cheers, Chantal. <laughs> <laughs> and then last, last question from Chantel is any embarrassing failed interactions with idols oh no oh I've got one when I went to the Goose Goose concert when I did the handshake I, I was saying something to Karen and I think I mixed my Japanese up because there's this oishi which which can be mixed between you're my favourite and yummy food yeah, and I, I said it a bit too loud, and then she just stood there going. And I think she was scared of me. I wasn't sure if she thought I was going to eat her. <laughs> but I was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. But yeah, I think it was just a mistranslation, I think. My one for me, um, it's Hyper Japan 29, like, for Nekroma at Hyper Japan for, between Michelle and Kenogi. Me trying to explain the roast dinner to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It, I, I just felt so bad because it's lamb's not common in Japan, like whatever part of Japan. But especially if it goes to Hokkaido, lamb is quite popular. I was trying to say lamb to them. It's, it's just trying to explain. <laughs> oh god, that was embarrassing. Uh, mine, mine was also at Juice Juices London Live in 2017. Um, I when I went to go see. Ruru and she was the first one in line for me to do a handshake with she did not understand anything I was saying she just looked at me in complete confusion <laughs> and she was just like hmm? what mm. and I was like oh why um Nana me a bit better and then everyone else was a bit better so but yeah Ruru just stared at me like I was speaking gibberish which yeah I probably was <laughs> But it is what it is. Um, she was probably nervous as heck because obviously different country and she was very new at the time. When I was at the Hanako show in Tsushima, I remember being stood there and um, and Hanako's quite well known for obviously not one to speak any English yeah. at all anyway. In the best of times, even in this country. But, um, but I remember being stood there and, I, and I'd learnt enough Japanese to get by. Like realistically, I'd learnt enough to be like, Right, mm. I can handle myself at the bar. I can handle myself enough to be able to turn around at the checky table. I can. I know that I'm ready to go. And given the chance that I can turn around and just be like, um, Hanakasan, like I love your music. Onga um, ga daisuke de. Like I love your music. What I really wasn't prepared for in the first interaction that I'd had in Japan at an actual gig, especially like. A, I mean, let's be honest, like an intimate one, like a Hanako gig, was being fucking forced up the front. <laughs> being utterly forced up the front and being right up in front of her. And she starts speaking in in full-on Japanese. And I have no clue what the fuck she's saying. So I think I'm going to cover all bases. Mm. <laughs> I'm just going to say thank you. Because, like, like I know that Hanukkah has this thing of kind of like sacrifice and all this, that and the other and, and mm. kind of like support. And, and so I, I just said, thank you. And I thought that might pass in some weird way. At the time, I remember I was drunk anyway. But I remember thinking that might work in some way of being like, thank you for giving me some interaction, you know. 
Um, she full on fucking punched me, and that was the time that she punched me, <laughs> and I didn't know how to fucking deal with that. But obviously, she punches me. I rock back a bit, and I just think, yes. <laughs> like, all joking aside from the first episode, I remember just thinking, I don't know how to. Do- so let's just deal with it in the in the most supportive way. Let's rock on. Yeah, <laughs> But I do definitely remember everybody around laughing because they'd obviously understood what she'd said. And she was asking something of me and I had no fucking clue what she was on about. So that Mm. would be like at the point where I was wanting to. And I don't I think if you're a foreigner in a crowd, Mm. you don't you're not necessarily looking to impress anybody. But you're certainly not wanting to look like a dickhead. Mm. Mm. Which is obviously what you felt like in that situation. So I'd say that was the most embarrassing time I had. But it didn't ruin the night at all because it was a fantastic evening. But that was definitely the most, like, the most mm. embarrassing night I've ever been with. Quite clearly, the rest of the audience understood except for you. <laughs> <laughs> so you were gonna... like, shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to add another thing to the to that question. Um, it's, uh, me with um, Pem. Uh, in 2017, like, for the winter of Japan, when they're like, you come up to them, like, and you want to throw, like, and they all signed it. They're all in character. I just felt so embarrassed. I wanted to say, like, nice to meet you. Um, like, they were just doing all that, and so I thought, say something, sort of thing. <laughs> like, they're all in character. So <laughs> yeah. that was embarrassing, too. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There'll be more to come, like yeah. when we're able to go back to see idols again, because it just is going to happen. It's like, I mean, I've had a few instances of like failed interactions with idols, but the first one was Juice Juice. I mean, it, it just it happens. It's yeah. one of those things, and you know, you know, we're going to stop it because there's going to be if you don't speak Japanese, there's going to be the language barrier, or there is that chance of messing up your Japanese if you do know Japanese. Um, it's it's just how it is at the end of the day even the failed interactions we're successful in actually meeting the idol at least so as long as we don't offend them we should be okay <laughs> matt fuck you <laughs> right idols so, uh, well, i think it's coming up to the end of the episode i believe it is yeah. um, oh, sad times. Oh, now it's time for that for that part of the end of the show where we recommend songs so i'll let you guys go mm-hmm. first recommendation oh well mine mine is the um 26 gino masquerade one which i mentioned earlier I just i've already forgotten its name so i'm not even gonna try <laughs> i will also suggest the um hokage 2021 versions of their songs that they've got on their new album which they've got a 10th anniversary special of juliet kimi wasukuna haku no ryu um, and it includes some past members of the group in it, which makes it a bit more of a special release in, in that way. That song, they kind of redo a lot, as, as Jenny knows far too well. Yeah. <laughs> they also have a 2021 version of Bacadane, which is one of my favourite songs from the group. They've got a 2021 version of Your Heart and Tsukima, two songs which last time they were redone was in 2013, I think. Mm. So... A long time ago, or well, 2014. <laughs> yeah. And Koji Kishika, which mm. it's a complete Hokage Princess song. It goes hard at first, and then it's, it's, it's basically the opposite of what Passcode's song was, their last song, <laughs> where it goes soft and then it goes hard. For Koji mm. Kishika, it goes hard, and then it suddenly goes into a complete 180, and it's this cutesy idol song, and you're just like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I'll suggest that, and if I can find a link to it that's not on iTunes, awesome. Otherwise, it's the 26 Gino Masquerade one. So, yay, Niji Mask. For me, it would be it would be Motion by Mamashiba no Taigun from their recent album Mamajor. It's fucking brilliant, and Hane Monster's vocals in that track are sick. They are fucking great. Mm. Um, I would recommend that. There's so many tracks I would like to recommend, but I'm only going to do one per episode. So for this episode, that is what I would recommend. I think that Motion by Mamashiba no Taigun is definitely a great kind of idea of what the Mamajor album is. It's fast paced, it's energetic, it's interesting, and it's also, it's going to get you in a mood. 
Now, what kind of mood that's going to mean <laughs> for you, I don't know. But for me, it makes me want to do shit. So mm. I'm kind of like, it gets me pumped up. It's a motivational and song. So, it yeah. really is for me, and um, I love the range of vocals that is on it because sometimes you'll look at a group and you'll think maybe not everybody's as good of a singer as everybody mm. else, but that is one of the kind of tracks where it's quite clear that it doesn't really matter, and some some of the different vocal ranges are absolutely gorgeous to listen to. So I absolutely recommend Motion by Mama Shiba no Taigo. For me, it'd be... There's two groups I'd recommend. One of them is Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. I really, really Great like man. them. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Um, I'd recommend the song Massive Car. That was the first song that really, really got me into them. Mm. I kind of went into it expecting one thing, but I came out with a completely different experience from it, and they're very, very, very talented. And then another is a J-Rock band that I think is either disbanded or on hiatus, and it's a group called Dada Roma. I really, really like them. Um, the song I'd recommend is Day by Day, because that's one of their more like ballady kind of songs. But apart from that, like they're very, very wacky. A lot of their music videos kind of have like a clownish aspect to them. So they're kind of like if the Joker decided to be a J-Rock singer. The only song that I wouldn't recommend, and I don't know whether it's going to get bleeped out, but it's a song called Masturbation. <laughs> and it's literally... <laughs> When Don't, I... ever bleep Don't ever bleep her. Don't ever bleep her. Masturbation and, is fun. And when I listen to the song, <laughs> I couldn't help but feel like, oh my God, if my mother was in the room. Because literally the chorus is, please pay for my masturbation. And I was like, what? <laughs> so, but apart from that song, they are very, very talented. And sadly, I think they have disbanded because the lead singer did say that they kind of like reached and achieved what they wanted to as a band. So I think they'll definitely come back in the future with like new groups and stuff. But yeah, I definitely recommend them because they are really a really good fun group to listen to. I think I know which group it is. Mm. I'd, I'd be quite surprised if a group um, released a track called Masturbation and didn't reach what they were looking for. But, uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. Like what you're saying about um, Jenny, just reminds you of bandmates. Don't let me down. All I'm thinking of is um, Kakrio Terror's release of the Forbidden Masturbation. <laughs> so, but all I'm thinking of is one of Hanako's bloody songs. Ah, oh, now oh, Father's Father's was Father. it Father's Masturbation? Yeah, it was. It was released. Oh, God. Father's Masturbation. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, some people were put off by the name of it, which I do understand. It's a bit of a... I mean, I'd be more put off by watch, but, you know, the, the yeah. fucking, you know, especially, let alone releasing it on YouTube. We all know that Hanako yeah. doesn't release on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my two songs that I recommend for this episode is, um, I'll start with this one, Marvelous, and it's um, a song called World vs. Honor from our, from their Marvelous 3 album. I love how they did the video because they were like, so the members are like, so just thinking of something, they all get together and go up for one night, and it's just how they did it, it was so cool. And um, I recommend that. And the other one, it's um, from Fukuoka, and they're from Japan. <laughs> Japanese musicians. Fukuoka. <laughs> from Fukuoka, Fukuoka. Japan. And then they're an all-girl metal band, they're called Bridea. And um, this song is um, called Ignite, which is from their Rise EP. And um, this is from 2017. Um, like, this song just hypes me up now and then when, when you get the timing right. So that's they're my two recommendations of this year. Um, this year, so, so well, that's it, everyone. For um, how are you? Sorry? How are your shots of Coca Cola going off, Kelly? How's that going? I think <laughs> the bottle's empty, it's down there. So the yeah, bottle's the empty, empty. It might get more shortly. So that's it for this episode of um, Worst of Round Table. So, uh, hope to see you all guys in the next episode. Yeah. Please check out Andrew's review for Fake Gear on Beyond Senpai and check out yeah. Jenny's new single, Kawaii. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm so me and Matt don't have anything to plug because we're useless. Because we're just fucking normal people. <laughs> His camera's as drunk that was as he is. That was See you all, guys. And so, yeah. See you all guys in the next episode. About to go. 
say goodbye to the round table. Bye. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you very much. Until, then, until the next episode, you can oh, lick oh. my balls. <laughs> no. You. See you next time. Get Matt Strong Zero. I want Strong Zero. Um, <laughs> I'll do it for it. You know, just just send it to me. Tell me what you want, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'll tell you what I want. I really, really want. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, like the Spice Girls said, you know what I mean? <laughs> but um, just send it. Just send him Strong Zero yeah. and he will wear a maid outfit. I'll wear anything you want if you send me Strong Zero. I'll support <laughs> anything you want. I'll promote anything you want. Just send me Strong Zero. Because um, if you send it to me, I'll actually distribute it. To the to the entire gang, I wouldn't just drink mm. it all myself. You can keep so, it. So you know, I don't want yeah. the fucker. No, yes you do. Yes <laughs> you do. <laughs> you know you want it. Oh, really? No wait, hang on. I gotta write that. According to this manual, I'm not allowed to say that. Uh... <laughs> Before we start, I just wanted to say, while it's recording, that at no point has fucking consent been given to start this recording. Oh, yeah. Uh, she did not consent. mention it, and <laughs> I'm a strong, independent man, and I'm not fucking dealing with this. <laughs> independent, but I wouldn't say you're strong. I mean, Hanako did I w- punch you. I wouldn't say independent either, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. That was me taking the piss, sorry. Yeah, that's all right.